Hi there, my name is Shannon and I'm Willamette Week's Music and Visual Arts Editor. Um, I'm here talking today with Kate Schoenhals, who is one of the veterinarians who has been leading Oregon State University's field treatment for animals at wildfire evacuation sites. Um, Dr. Sh Dr. Schoenhals, how, how often have you been making trips out to the evacuation sites? Um, well, initially we were going out, um, we were kind of covering two different evacuation centers, one at Benton County and then one at Lynn County. Um, and we went out to Benton County initially twice a day while animals were first getting settled in there and they were having new horses, new pigs, new things getting added in. And then we were going out to Lynn County once a day. Um, and then there was also some efforts by the like community coordinators for other veterinarians to stop in um, as needed as well. And then we just had our phones and a couple of trucks on the ready for other emergencies that popped up in addition to our like regular daily checks on both of those places. Um, and then we did kind of just as needed basis. We had some doctors we sent up to the Oregon State Fairgrounds in Salem um, and then we had some sick horses pop up at kind of a makeshift evacuation center in people's own like private property. Um, it was up in Kings Valley area. <laughs> um, so yeah, we tried to go like where we could without leaving our own clients stranded and abandoned. And then we covered the two closest county shelters um, in the vicinity. Right. Uh, so for people who have never been to one of the large evacuation sites, what's it sort of like there? Like, what's what's the scene? Um, so, I mean, both of the like Lynn County and Benton County fairgrounds, I mean, they're where they house fair animals. So they have at least the like means of setting up sort of temporary pens and housing for large volumes of animals. Um, it's usually not this last minute and on such short notice. Um, you know, Benton County kind of just set up these like open air temporary, um, you know, corrals for their horses and livestock in what usually is an arena where they would host like a rodeo event or something. And then at Lynn County, they had actual like stalls partitioned out um, underneath, you know, their barns where they do their usual livestock activities. Um, and then they had, I mean, signs to direct people delivering huge loads of donated hay, feed material, buckets. Um, I mean, I can imagine that like coordinating all of just the like, how are we gonna get all these animals like food and water <laughs> under, you know, a very short, like, <laughs> I don't know, organizational time span. Um, it was very impressive. Both of them are very well organized. Um, but so I would say it looked just like a giant makeshift boarding facility <laughs> um, with all different species. I mean, they housed chickens, rabbits, um, there were llamas, alpacas, and um, sheep, goats, pigs, horses, pretty much all species of livestock. Um, the only things missing really were dogs and cats because people kept them, I think, with their people. <laughs> yeah, sure. Um, what are some of the, the common conditions or injuries that you've been treating? Uh, well, fortunately, I think a lot of people were evacuating their like large animals and livestock when they were getting like the level one, level two levels or, you know, evacuation warnings. And so, it seemed like a lot of it was preemptive, like they weren't, those horses and those cattle weren't like in an actual fire before they were evacuated. So there were some, you know, respiratory issues associated with smoke inhalation and also just with being, you know, shipped into like a community housing pool where bugs and germs can be shared that aren't usually shared. Um, but mostly, honestly, it was things like lacerations experienced from like the trauma and stress of transport. Um, you know, there was a, a horse that had a pretty good wound after being having to like ford a river to evacuate <laughs> um, its land area to, I guess, get access to a trailer to be exported elsewhere. Um, but I mean, fortunately 
for the most part, it wasn't like the burns, you know, scary things that you might expect with a fire. It was just associated with the chaos of having to mass evacuate animals <laughs> all at once. <laughs> Is it extra difficult for you then to like treat these animals if they're kind of frazzled and stressed and probably not happy to be in this confusing new place? Um, I mean, it, it, it definitely adds, I guess, an additional component to, I mean, how invasive and involved, um, you know, you want to get right up front. I mean, treatment and veterinary care and attention is stressful, even under normal circumstances where they're happy and at home. I mean, just like people, you know, that don't like going to the doctor, there's a good volume of, of as much as I love them, horses that don't love me. Um, so we did, we tried to do, essentially our daily visits were composed of like a visual inspection of all of the animals housed at the facility. So we weren't going in and directly interacting with them unless they had a particular issue that needed attention. Um, and I mean, fortunately, we have some, you know, decent medications and drugs that can help facilitate easing those situations. Um, and I mean, then just communicating with the caretakers to make sure that they're still eating, drinking, pooping, peeing. You just do the best that you can. Um, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is it, is it mostly been like the... Um, the species of livestock that you you mentioned or have you had to, have you encountered any like unexpected species um, there were two emus emus at Lynn County which I personally didn't examine or evaluate um, but the nice thing about being at Oregon State is that the volunteers that we had were from a variety of different backgrounds so my primary like species of interest and expertise is horses but we had um, I mean, I, we had a gal come along that has like a PhD as well as a DVM, you know, in epidemiology. And she has a lot of special experience with small ruminants, well, small and large ruminants, as well as um, poultry um, and birds. And then, um, I mean, we had um, food animal veterinarians that are used to seeing, you know, pigs and cattle. And we had a medicine resident that was out there like daily at Benton County looking at all the species and has, you know, is well versed in a background for all of those, especially on like a specialized level. And we even had like a boarded surgeon that was out doing field calls, you know, something she probably hasn't done. <laughs> um, I mean, since her tenure at Oregon State. So, um, I mean, anything that came up unexpected, we had the personnel to, to, I guess, consult if not have present to take care of it. How do you treat a horse that has been inhaling wildfire smoke? Um, I mean, there is no like magic, like cure or treatment. It's mostly just rest and supportive care. Um, we had a couple that, you know, came down um, with like influenza, um, which is a virus that is, you know, shared across horses um, even when there isn't smoke in the air. And I think that the smoke just exacerbated the situation and they got a lot more sick than um, they otherwise maybe would have been. Um, and so they ended up with some secondary bacterial infections. So we treated those with antibiotics, um, pain medications, some anti-inflammatories. Um, and then, I mean, honestly, the rain coming and clearing out the, the air was key. Um, things that were really sick that needed to come to the hospital, um, you know, could come here where we have like, you know, a ventilated space that wasn't quite as smoky or as ashy as outside at least. But yeah, it's essentially supportive care and just trying to get them through keeping a meat and drink and poop and peeing. 